Guys, I'm really delighted to welcome to the podcast a new guest, Mark Kahlberg. He's an Israeli security expert, actually based in Israel. He's the director of MKISC and MK International Security Consulting. Uh, this is a guy with an amazing record. He served in the South African Defense Force, the Israel Defense Force, the Israel National Police. He is, uh, in fact, the architect of some unique ideas, including a unique program called the Secure Zone Concept. And uh, he is currently assisting the Israel Police International Spokespersons Unity as a volunteer. The website, by the way, mksecurityconsulting.com. Uh, Mark, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining from, from Israel. Let's begin by asking, what is the latest situation uh, in Israel now? Is there the danger of a new attack? Or is Israel in a position where we've absorbed the attack, we've seen what's happened, we've now uh, secured um, the country, and it's now time to go back and go after the bad guys? Finish. to be honest, we've been attacked for the last 18 days in a row, including today, and including quite a serious incident last night, which the IDF thwarted with a, a group of terrorists coming through from Gaza, via the sea, and trying to attack, again, another kibbutz, uh, another village uh, on, on the seashore. They were thwarted. They were caught at sea by our Navy and by our Air Force, and the uh, taken out pretty much. Um, just today, we've had some uh, missile fire from a uh, rocket fire from Gaza, uh, basically going into Eilat, which is the first. Eilat is the southernmost Red Sea border part of, of Israel and uh, going much further north. Obviously, the Lebanon border is, uh, is heated up. Things are happening in Lebanon, but on a very, let's call it a, a lower scale in, in the meantime. Um, but certainly there's this uh, anti-tank fire and the IDF is responding. The Israeli police um, who are in charge of our internal security in Israel are dealing you know, with classic crime and dealing with the terror threat all the time. So it's quite a, quite a situation. We, we at war. Mark, uh, can you give us an idea of the... Well, it's hard to use the word logic of terrorism, but if I think back to the 70s and 80s, a lot of times what the terrorists would do is take hostages. And the logic of it was obvious. They wanted something in return, and so they would take over a plane, and they would say, we'll only release the passengers if you do X, Y, or Z. What is the logic from the Hamas and Iran point of view of launching a kind of attack on civilians, an attack that is sure to provoke a strong response? There is no logic. There cannot be logic. There's no logical thought process in doing what these monsters, these savages did on the 7th of October. Um, if we could share with you the atrocities that these people did, rape, burning people, putting landmines underneath two bodies so that when the emergency first responders came to try and give them first aid, they were also blown up. Uh, beheadings. The videos and the pictures that I've sadly been witness to and I've seen, I haven't been there. It's, it's, words cannot describe. You cannot describe what people saw there. And, you know, I, I come from the police. I've spoken to police officers who, who have survived. We've had 58 policemen killed on, on the 7th of October. For Israel, that's a lot of policemen. It's, it's a full police station. And it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy, but Israel is strong. And I think that these violent monsters called Hamas terrorists, I think they are going to get what they deserve. Can you give us some idea, Mark, about you've been very involved in establishing security zones and ways to sort of insulate cities and populations from this kind of attack. I'm sure there's a lot of internal examination in Israel. And, and there's, of course, an equally important question about U.S. intelligence agencies. But is there any um, determination so far about how such a massive attack could have penetrated without seemingly being detected at all? I'm not privy to um, investigation 
Uh, I'm, I'm a civilian today. Um, I've heard on the TV, politicians and military people come out openly and say, we've had flaws. I guess that um, our allies maybe also had flaws. Uh, the intelligence, I imagine, was there. It wasn't dealt with. I'm not sure. So I, I don't want to say anything that I, I don't know. Um, on a personal level, the writing has been on the wall for a long time. And maybe not the scope and what we saw happen uh, uh, was, was thinkable, was imaginable. Who could have thought that Hamas would do something that makes ISIS look like nice school kids? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is a, this is an attack and, and it's a, it's this, the world's scariest movie, Danish. Cannot describe the words of the of, of the, the scenes that I've seen there. I've I've been in sixteen terror attacks. I've I've been at the scene of what was the worst terror attack in Israel in the Jewish Passover of two thousand and two. The, the the Passover attack in Netanya. We we carried out bodies on tables from the, the dining hall. That for me was post trauma. I suffered from post trauma because of that. But what I've seen now, I mean, you, you don't want to compare a terror attack with a terror attack, but this is something that the world needs to wake up and understand that this is not only about Israel. This is going bigger. This I have Christian friends, I have Jewish friends, I have Muslim friends around the world that cannot believe what I've shown them and, sh and spoken to them about. They cannot believe. It's got nothing to do with anything else but pure brutality. It's inhumane. It's, it's savage. I don't have the words to describe what, what I've seen. We'll be right back with Mark Kahlberg, the website mksecurityconsulting.com. Okay, guys, I'd like to invite you to check out my Locals channel and become an annual subscriber. Here's the deal. If you become an annual subscriber, you get the new film, Police State, for free. It's included in your annual subscription. And you get a whole bunch of other films, as I'm about to tell you about. I post a lot of exclusive content on Locals, including content that's censored on other social media platforms. I also post Debbie and I some personal stuff that you get to get a window into our family. On Locals, you basically get Dinesh Unchained, Dinesh Unfiltered, Dinesh Uncensored. You also interact with me directly. I do a weekly Q&A every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. No topic is off limits. I'll be doing some Q&A responding to questions about the movie over the next few weeks. I've also uploaded some cool films to locals, documentaries, feature films, mine, but also films by other independent producers. 2,000 Mules is up there. And the new film, of course, Police State. I'll be giving you the inside scoop on locals. As I mentioned, if you're an annual subscriber, you can stream and watch it for free. So check out the channel. It's Dinesh.locals.com. I'd love to have you along for this great ride. Again, it's Dinesh.locals.com. <laughs>